Hi, I'm from FTC Team 13356. This video will show you how to isolate color in an image using OpenCV in FTC. Specifically, we will be isolating the color yellow that FTC commonly uses for game elements for, from our webcam feed. For our setup, we used EasyOpenCV. We'll provide a link to the GitHub library in the description below. For our camera, we used a Logitech C270 webcam. For our setup, for our code, we used uh, three classes, being the CV master class, which, is ma which mainly just initializes the code, the stick observer pipeline, which has the code that we'll mainly be working on and will process each frame, and the our autonomous program, which just calls the uh, CV master class and the pipeline. So in our CV master class, uh, we have the initialization and we will just call the pipeline. In the observer pipeline in the process frame function, we will go through seven steps to isolate the color. The first step is to convert from RGB to HSV. HSV is more convenient for filtering out color because it has the hue value, which will specify what color it is, and it'll have the saturation value and the saturation and value values, which will be providing the lighting. Next, we'll apply a lenient HSV filter to produce a black and white mask of the, image, of the image. Next, we will color in the mask. And then we will scale the average saturation of the mask to a constant. Then we'll apply a stricter HSV range to isolate the color more accurately. And finally, we will detect the edges. The first thing we will do is look at the input. The input is the frame that the camera sees when you call this function. The input is in RGB. To look at the input, you simply have to return the input and make sure not to release it. So here is the feed of the input. As you can see, it's a regular RGB feed. And we're looking at various objects, including some non-yellow objects like the white background, the gray mat, and the blue cones some near yellow objects like the cardboard and the yellow objects that we're trying to isolate like the cone and the cube. Uh, when we turn the light off, uh, we can see that the lighting changes uh, by quite a bit. The next step is to convert our RGB input image into an HSV image. We want to do this because HSV allows for more ease of filtering. To do this, uh, you simply use OpenCV's built-in improc.cvtcolor function with input being your source or what is going, it's going to be using and any, uh, any mat that you want to be the output. Then you use color RGB to HSV to specify that your input is in RGB and your output is going to be in HSV. Now to print out mat, you do the same thing as before, except now you want to be returning mat. We did this by copying mat to input and returning input. You could also just return mat. Here is the output video of the output feed of HSV. Uh, as you can see, it's very different. Uh, turn, when the light turns off, uh, the values still change quite a bit. And you can see that from the angle of the light from the other light source. Uh, yeah. Next, we'll be filtering out, uh, applying a lenient filter to our HSV image to produce a black and white mask. So to set our HSV range, you simply specify the lower bound HSV, which is called scalar low HSV here. And this will be your H value, which in this case is 20, your saturation value, 70, and your value, which is 80. H will specify the hue or color saturation, how close or how far from white it is, and value, how far from black it is. For the high HSV, we used 32, 255, 255. 255 is the maximum. To apply this filter, the function you want to use is OpenCV's core.inRange function. Uh, the input is our HSV uh, Im image and the lower bound is low HSV, and the upper bound is high HSV. The output is the destination, which is fresh. To print it out, 
uh, you just have to do the same thing. So you just copy to input and return input. Here is the feed after the HSV filter. As you can see, it has white where all the yellow or near yellow objects are, and it has black where all the where everything else is. When we turn the light off, uh, you can see that it still includes everything because we applied a lenient filter. After producing the mask, what we want to do is uh, color back in the white part. So to do this, we use the OpenCV function core.bidwise and. So what this will do is it'll combine the source image, uh, the two, it'll combine two source images. In this case, we don't really want two different source images, so we'll just use our HSV image for both of them. And the reason we use this is because of we can apply a mask to it, which is an optional mask. So everything that is colored white in this mask will be combined with these two source images. And since they're the same, it'll just be from the source image. And our destination will be called masked. So to print it out, uh, we kind of we don't want to look at it in HSV because as you saw before, it's very different. It's not what we're usually capable of really effectively interpreting. So we'll just convert it back to RGB for the output. The feed of the masked HSV, as you can see, it's not an HSV because we changed it to RGB uh, for just for the printing out. When we turn off the light, you can see that the back poles, uh, the poles that don't have the light anymore, have been changed dramatically. So the next step is to average the saturation and scale it up to a constant. So the reason we're doing this is you may have noticed that when we applied our so-called lenient uh, HSV range, it included some of the near yellow objects like the cardboard. So the reason why we didn't directly apply a very strict HSV range to it was because the main differentiation between the cardboard and the pole color was the saturation. And the saturation will change greatly in different lightings. One example of this is the sun. So before sunset in our garage, we had a specific strict range that was working. However, after the sunset and it became nighttime and we used our garage lights, the HSV range changed pretty dramatically by about 10 to 20. So to account for that, we're going to average the saturation and uh, we're going to scale it to a constant. So to average the saturation, uh, we didn't want to include the rest of the background as that may affect your average. So we're only going to be averaging the things after we masked. And that is just masked right now because the things that are not near yellow or yellow are now black. So to average, we use the OpenCV function core.mean masked, which is the source image, and thresh, which is the mask that you want to average it through, because you don't want to include all the black. That would just be zero. And then we'll use the, we'll actually scale it. So to do that, we use OpenCV's convert to with the source here. So mask.convert to, and the destination is scaled mask. Uh, this will specify that you want it in the same color code, so HSV, and you want to uh, scale it to the average, scale it to any constant you want. We chose 150 because it's kind of near the middle of 0 to 255, and you divide that by the average value of the saturation, which is 1 here, and beta will just add on to anything. Uh, we'll just add on to the values so like if you put it beta as 10, it'll increase every value by 10. So now that you have your scaled, you can just print it out. So you can just uh, put scaled mask instead. Again, we want to look at it in RGB. OK, so here's the feed after the average, after the saturation has been scaled up. You can see that the whole image is now darker because we scaled it to 150, which is darker than what it was before. When we turn the light off, uh, you can see that the back still changes because the light is from the left. But uh, 
you can see that it's still stable. So you may have noticed in the output that the back poles, or the poles on the back right at least, were still being darkened. And this is because uh, the light source in our garage after turning off one of those lights is on the left. So when you're looking at a very large area, the difference in lighting from that one light source is going to be pretty large. So although the average saturation was still 150, you'd still have a saturation gradient from left to right from away the light source. In the competition, or if you put it on your actual robot, instead of looking at the entire field, the lighting is that of the targets that you're looking at are most likely going to be much more close to each other. So this should still work. So this should work better in when it's closer to the game elements. So next we apply a stricter uh, HSV range. So this will uh, filter out the near yellow stuff now. And we're, we can do this now because uh, we've averaged the saturation. So it's gonna be a lot more consistent. So to do this, we define our strict low and strict upper bound. Uh, we just use 150 because uh, the game element yellow is more saturated than the cardboard yellow or brown really. And then we use the core dot in range function again, this time using the strict upper bound and lower bound and scaled mask as the input and scaled thresh will be the output. And to print this out, you just uh, use scaled thresh. So this is the image after the saturation has been scaled and the strict uh, HSV filter has been applied. Uh, similar to the last thresh, it was it had a white. It has everything that's yellow in white, and but this time even the near yellows is black. So now that you have your strictly uh, your scaled thresh, uh, you want to fill it in again with color. Uh, this is mainly just for. Uh, purposes of making it easier to look at. So you do the same thing as before, but with scaled thresh as the mask, uh, you still want matte as the uh, source because uh, you want the same colors. Uh, and then we just used final mask as the destination. So here is the mask after being mask of the image after being strictly filtered. Uh, when we turn off the light, uh, you can see that the average saturation is still the same. So our last step was to detect the edges. And this would simply just be using the OpenCV improg.canny function, which will apply canny edge detection algorithm onto your uh, source. Uh, we use threshold 100 and 200, and the output is going to be in edges. Oh, what you can do with this uh, after you've detected the edges is you can use uh, find contours and uh, find actual information about uh, the shapes. So here's the feed after the canny edge detection. So as you can see, it's drawing pretty accurate rectangles around each of the shapes, the poles and the cube. When the light is turned off, uh, you can see that the pole in the back, which is farther away from the remaining light source, it is less clear and everything else is still the same.